Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, WLORradio.com family. Good morning, Facebook family. Good morning, um, good morning, YouTube family. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Whatever time this message reaches you, bless be God. Bless, 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 bless be God. Amen. Um, so this morning's message is entitled, uh, it's entitled Shalom, peace be unto you. So, you know, we're living in such perilous times and so many things are going on. We've heard about the coronavirus. We've heard about, we know about the influenza virus, um, and still people's lives are going on because people have to work. People are concerned if they don't work, what's going to happen, you know, with their rent, what's going to happen with their, how can they get their medicines? People have different things going on. And now this, so, but in the midst of strife, in the midst of trouble, there is always the shalom peace of God. When, good, yes, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. When we hear shalom, we should always picture the Prince of Peace destroying the chaos around us. Uh, I'm not here to give a, a lesson in Hebrew and the letters, the shin, you know, the, the whole letters of how shalom is spelt. However, you know, from time to time I've done that. But I'm just giving you a summation of what the picture, because remember that Hebrew is, is pictograph, right? And numbers. And so the letters in Shalom tells a story. And what it tells is that the Prince of Peace is destroying the chaos that surrounds us. And so... We've seen that when Christ walked on earth and before he came to earth, whenever an angel of God approached a child of God or someone, the angel said, peace be unto you. Jesus also said, peace be unto you. And he spoke peace to the wind. When the, when the storm arose, he said, shalom, peace be still. And so he was saying chaos. You have to, you're being destroyed. Whenever we hear the word shalom or peace, just picture in your mind's eye how the Prince of Peace is destroying the chaos that's going on around you. So no matter what it is, when you hear shalom, peace be unto you. It's a message of goodwill. It's a hopeful message. It's a blessing. Jesus told his disciples in John 14 and 27, peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace. Good morning. How are you, evangelist? Peace I leave with you. Jesus says, it is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. And then Jesus says, do not be worried and upset. And then he says, do not be afraid. If there's ever a time that I think we need not to be worried or upset or be afraid, it's now. And some folks might say, oh, but you don't know. Well, I may not know. You may not know everything that's going on. But we, we belong to one who does, and that is Christ Jesus, our Savior, God, our Heavenly Father. He is our protector. You know, Psalm 91 is a very precious psalm, and now you will hear it being read in most churches, right? Uh, and we should know this. When I, Growing up back home in school, where I grew up in Jamaica, West Indies, and um, Psalm 91 was a psalm that we had to learn by heart, 
right? Meaning we had to know it so that we could recite it. However, in getting to know the real value of the psalm, we have to get to know God. We have to be close to God. When we think about that, he says in verse four, under he shall cover thee with his what? Feathers. Now, if you've ever seen a mother hen, the only way she can cover her chicks is when they run up under her feathers. And have you ever been curious to know how she can hold all those little chicks under there and sometimes you don't even see them? She'll be standing there like she's all alone and then when she raises up her wings, all these little chicks fly and you're like, wow, all those chickens were under her wings? How did they get under her wings? They had to get close to her. The chicken that's over there, you know, there's a, a, a good, good morning, evangelist. There is a, a, a saying in Jamaica when, you know, people say, oh, protect your chickens because the hawk is coming. Pea hawk, right? The hawk is coming and the hawk would take the chicken. Well, whenever the hawk made that screeching sound in the sky, guess what? The mother hen would make a sound and her chicks would run to her. The only one that could be taken is the one that wouldn't go under her wing, the one that wouldn't get close to her. What am I saying? That these are the days when we need to be close to our daddy. See, we need to be close to our daddy God all the time. However, in order for our lives to be protected, we have to have a close relationship with God. And so Jesus' disciples were close to him. And so he gave them a beautiful promise, right? He said that, listen, Jesus told them this before the enemy of his soul and ours, before he leashed, unleashed everything that he could against Christ, right? He also gave this peace, this shalom to his disciples before they were plunged into a world of chaos. When we read the Gospels, we were told how they, got, they were afraid. They had to hide because so much was going on at that time. Well, yes, Bishop. So the same word applies to us today during this age. Do you think that Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, were not aware of the coronavirus and now they're sitting there wringing their hands and going... Wait, what are we going to do? Uh, what, 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 what's, what's going to happen? No, that's not happening. That's not the scenario, sons and daughters of God. God is saying, peace, shalom. When Jesus told us, Jesus also told his disciples, I cannot talk with you much longer because the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me. And you have to, you see, you, you know, he has no power. The enemy has no power over Christ. And if we're in Christ, he has no power over us. And so Jesus said, but the world must know that I love the father. What? Jesus loves the father. That's why I do everything he commands me. And what did God command Jesus to do? Speak peace over us. Speak shalom to us. You see, as Jesus prepared his disciples, he also prepared us. Because when we read the word of God, we stay prepared, don't we? Listen, God wants us to have peace during these troubling and chaotic moments. As we face the uncertainties, not being really sure about the coronavirus, about its origin, its lifespan, and the fact that it's similar to the flu virus is a cause for concern. But Jesus has left his shalom peace with us. See, this virus is not discriminatory. It's not saying, well, if you're young or you're old or you're black or you're white or you're rich or you're poor or you're famous or you're not, or you're Asian, or you're of another race. No, this virus, it's a virus. You know, I read where Tom Hanks and his wife 
are in Australia. Um, he was filming a movie and his wife, they both, you know, started, his wife was feeling tired and they went to the hospital and they were tested and they were both positive. And he said, well, they'll just have to take it day by day. And I thought, wow, that sounds like someone who's at peace. It doesn't mean that he's not concerned about himself or his wife. What he's saying is that what are they going to do, right? I don't know if they're Christians or not, but he sounded pretty peaceful to me. As children of God, we have to know that we can trust our daddy God. Because Jesus has left his shalom peace with us. When Jesus told his disciples that he would no, cannot talk to them much longer, when he left, he sent us the Holy Spirit who talks to us all the time. It's whether or not, are you listening? Are you listening? You know, I, I'm a person that I tend to watch people. I look at folks in their eyes. And when people can't look at me in my eyes, I begin to be concerned about that, right? Because, and when I see, if I'm speaking to you and your gaze is here and there and elsewhere, I'll cut my conversation and walk away. How do you think the Holy Spirit feels? The Bible says, the word of God said, God said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. When he speaks to us, we ought to listen. He resides within us for a reason. Jesus gave him to us for our divine protection so that when things like this is going on, he says, peace be still. Come, daughter, come, son. Draw close to your daddy. Because in Psalm 91, if you're not close, the Bible says, he who dwells, where? In Christ. And we say as Jesus is seated in heavenly places, so are we in this world, right? But if we're not close to him, then how? He who dwells in the secret place is protected, the word of God tells us. No evil shall befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. Why? Because in our dwelling, who dwells there? The Holy Spirit. And I, I'm always going back to this. That when the Ark of the Covenant went into the Temple of Dagon, it ended for the devil. Did it not? Statue broke its hands. And the foolish people raised it up again because the God couldn't get up on its own. It was created by man. They raised it up again. The next morning they came, what? Its head was broken. Head and hands. The end. Come on now. Our daddy God is a great and a mighty God. Our daddy God is a loving God. Are you close to your daddy? Are you close enough to get under his wings? We all have parents, but not everybody is close to their parents. Some kids don't even speak to their parents. Some parents don't know where their children are. But God, and for you parents, you're a child of God, believe God, because he said he will bring them back. Word of God. Are you standing on the word? Are you close to your daddy? Are you close enough to hide under the shadow of his wings during these times of chaos? See, a lot is going on. And we have to wonder what are the distractions because I watched a documentary where one of 4,000 satellites that's in the sky that the U.S. has picked up. They picked up warheads in China. Good morning, Paulette. They picked up on what, something that went wrong. 2019, last year, in Russia. Huh? Come on. There are countries that hate America and says they're, they're building missiles to annihilate innocent lives that have nothing to do. Like, what did we do to them? Think about it, sons and daughters of God. Are you close enough to God? Are you under his wings this morning? Know that he is our defender. And he says, Shalom, peace.
peace. My peace, Jesus says. Not as the world gives. Because the world's peace you cannot trust. But whose peace can you trust? The tr peace of Christ. Shalom. I'm telling you. God is a mighty good God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, God commanded Jesus to leave his peace with us so that we would not be afraid of what the enemy does because Jesus has power over him and over his works. You see, the shalom peace of Christ still destroys chaos today. You know, when you read Exodus, and if you read from Exodus 8 through 12, 13, and, you know, when the plagues was on the children of e Egypt. What, I, the first time I read this, I was so baffled because the Bible said when darkness came upon Egypt, they, they could not even raise from their bed. That's how dark and oppressive the darkness was. Yet, those who were close to God had light. That was a supernatural light. As supernatural as the dark was, the light was also supernatural. You see, while the children of Israel were there and the plagues were there, Christ spoke shalom peace to them. Yeah, you know, I tried to, 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 to share some of these messages before, right? But I'm telling you, it's so deep, guys. The love of God is greater far than our tongue can tell than we've ever experienced. We just keep, it's just for us to keep experiencing his love. That he would say, think about this, before you and I were ever born, our fathers, our forefathers, our progenitors way back, come on now. And Jesus said, Shalom, peace be unto you. Peace be still. And it applies today. My God, what a love. Hug yourself and see Jesus hugging you. Come on. Hug yourself. See yourself under the shadow of the wings of Almighty God. What can reach you under his, when you're under his wings? When you're in your parents' arms, don't you feel for those whose parents are still alive? And if you've experienced it in the past, it's a place where you just feel so safe. You don't want to move. Well, the same applies now with God our heavenly Abba. Jesus said, I came to unfold. What? When Je And Bishop was just teaching about this. That, Je that Jesus prayed that the Father not take us out of this world, but that he protects us. And what name was that? Abba. Daddy. Daddy, it's about relationship, guys. It's about being family. And do you think God's not going to take care of his family? You see, Jesus' peace gives us the assurance that we will be okay. You see, his peace brings harmony. His peace brings wholeness. His peace brings completeness. His peace brings prosperity. His peace brings well-being and tranquility. Word of God. You see, even though tens of thousands may fall from the coronavirus, from the flu virus, still we stand strong. You see, God has even given us his armor. You remember when David went, when, when David decided, wait, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who terrorizes the army of God? How dare he terrorize the army of God? See, David was willing to go up against him. But when they said, hey, Saul, king who was hiding from Goliath, here is someone who's willing to go fight this. And, 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 and the king must have been thinking, this is a stupid guy. It was this scrawny kid. But you know what? If he wants to go here, put on my armor. Well, guess what? David was like, uh-uh, this is not going to work. Your armor doesn't fit me. 
Well, what I love about the armor is, of God is it doesn't matter if you're tall, if you're short, if you're fat, if you're skinny. It doesn't matter what your size is. It fits perfectly. Glory to God and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, the armor of God fits each and every one of God's children perfectly. It's custom made. It's fit to be size. Huh? It's fit to size. So you lose weight, it still fit. You gain weight, it still fits. You grow, it fits. You shrink, it fits. You know, I went to church <laughs> a few Sabbaths ago at my, my uh, church. And uh, one of the ladies that I know very well and love for years, uh, I saw her and I'm like, wait, were you always this short? And she said, she, as she gets older, she's like, she's decreasing in size. Now, she was petite to start with, and she really got smaller. Well, guess what, guys? For her, the armor of God still fits. For you and I, the armor of God fits us. It fit me when I was 106 pounds, and it's fit me now that I've put on some weight. Praise, praise Jesus. Yes. It fits. It fits you, Bishop, whatever size you are. It fits you. It fits your family. It fits us. It fits our family. The armor of God fits us very well. And God has placed his armor. He said, put on my whole armor. And what? Cover your head. Cover your breast. Just chest. The breastplate covers our lungs as well, guys. It covers our innards. Huh? The loin, gird our loin with the belt of truth that overrides earthly fact. P put on the shoes huh, of peace that wherever we are, his shalom reigns. I showed you pictures before because we were, you know, God always prepares us. I told you after not being able to walk. The first place God took me was to the museum. Listen to this. And I walked for hours and my, I ended up doing, I forgot how many miles that day within the museum. And one of the places that he took me was to show me the armor that how men use the armor they wore to go into battle to fight. And I was thinking, how did they manage to fight with these things on. They look so cumbersome. Some were heavy and they were metal, but they had to cover everything. Well, the armor of God is not cumbersome. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. The armor of God is light, but the protection it yields, what can beat that? Come on now. So God has given us this armor and he says, stand. And he gives us the shield his magnet that covers us all around and the sword of the spirit, which is his word. Huh? And God said his word, his word can perform surgery. See, God is the master surgeon. You know, hallelujah, glory to God. I, I spoke at a, 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 a little bit at a, a conference, uh, uh, positive under pressure. And uh, some of the responses I tell you was, really interesting. And my niece had watched the, the video and she said, as she watched it, she just saw God being the surgeon that he was, who meticulously took a rib out of Adam's side to form Eve. And she's like, man, what a surgery. I mean, can you see it guys? If you have to have surgery, who do you want there? God, And he is that and so much more. So God, he, he, he gives us his whole armor and he said, put on my armor and do what? Stand against what? The wiles of the enemy. And what are the wiles? See, it's the lies, it's attacks, it's sickness, it's disease, it's viruses, it's bad bacteria, it's whatever is negative that the enemy throws at you and I. Those are the wiles. He said, put it on and do what? Stand. Stand strong. Stand firm. Stand upright. Because you're standing under the shadow of your daddy's ways. Huh? When we're covered under the wings of our Abba, who is going to come up to our Abba to say, no, no. You know, yesterday, 
I saw the police officers trying to, they were trying to protect another person, but in order to protect that person, they had to keep that person locked in the store because the, this young man who was trying to get at the other person, when I t tell you, he wrangled his way out of the police. Like, listen, this, this was a kid. And, and well, he was a decent sized kid, but he's a kid. He's a young kid. You could tell. And he wrangled his way out of four police officers grip. And the, 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 the largest police officer was big and, and had to block the door and said, no, you're not getting in there. They didn't know what to do with themselves. This kid was just so gung ho to go after the other person. I don't know who the person was they were going after, to be honest, because I never saw. But he, he was like, no, no, no. And he was so off top and so angry and so ready to charge. And he dropped his bag and he's like, and, and the other, well, you know, since he was just sliding out of their hands, they were like, well, you're not getting in there. Well, what do you think? If the police officers will do their endeavor best to protect another person from being harmed, how much more you and I with our daddy God? You're talking about our daddy. Come on now. What would you do if you're a parent, if you're a mother or a father to protect your child? What would you do? You see, I guarantee if it was the, the parent that was trying to protect their own child or person that was in that, in that store, trust the narrative would have read differently. Huh? Because, you know, they say a mother becomes a lion and how much more a daddy, right? And our big brother, the lion of Judah, come on now. So when we put on the armor of God, we can stand strong again, Back, bad bacteria against viruses, against anything that the enemy throws at us. We're safe in the armor of God. We're safe under the wings, under the arms, in the arms of God. We're safe. Glory to God. The shalom peace of God keeps us safe. See, beloved, God doesn't want you and I to be worried, upset, or afraid. He wants us to remain strong in the shalom peace that he has left us. His peace is a blessing unto us. Psalm 90, 29, sorry, Psalm 29 and 11 tells us the Lord gives strength to his people and blesses them. What? With peace. Peace is a blessing, guys. I mean, I know some people might be saying, well, why are you saying peace? Listen, this is what the Lord told me. Shalom. Peace be still. This is the message. I can't. I have to. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Peace be unto you. This is what the Lord said. So I have to follow instructions. Uh, I, I'm comforted by it. And I pray that you are as well. You see, the peace of God gives us strength. Proverbs 24 and 10 tells us, Proverbs 24 and 10, I tell you when I read that, I said, my Lord, it says, if you fall to peace during a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. I don't know about you, but that, that, that was like deep. I was like, Lord, you see, when we get discombobulated and frantic, and start panicking. God is saying, where is your trust in me? We don't have much substance without God. And if we don't have him, if we don't have God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit, then we panic. Do we get concerned? And God's not saying don't get concerned, but he's saying don't focus on that. See, God's peace helps us to be calm during the storms of life. And it is very important to our well-being that we remain calm. You see, when we're calm, and you can check with your doctor, our immune system operates optimally. We experience favorable health when we're at peace. See, if you are peaceful, you won't panic. 
And this is coming from a person who's had panic anxiety attacks in the past. I'm telling you. I'm not saying something to you that I'm not privy or aware of. Yes. But one thing I know, when the peace of God spoke to me, when he said, daughter, shalom, oh man. I was like, wait. Say what now? Why was I panicking? And the closer I got to my daddy God, the more I realized, wow, there's a safety here. Glory to God. See, panic disturbs our immune system. Panic puts our bodies into stress mode. Panic causes our rhythm to become unbalanced. Panic puts stress on your heart. Now, remember, God said, guard your heart for out of it, what flows blood and you want your blood to be what healthy and not to be bad blood. I'm not making this up, guys. Medical doctors call it just that bad blood. Once your blood isn't flowing the way it's supposed to flow, it's bad blood. It's pooling. Huh? It's bad blood. You know, so mercy, mercy, Jesus. I pray today that everyone hearing this, all of us will have good, healthy blood. Huh? That the blood of Jesus is what's flowing through our veins. Glory to God. So we need our hearts, guys, to be happy and healthy. Because a merry heart do it good as medicine, right? When a heart is happy, oh, your body is healthy. When your heart is unhappy, what? So this, this is scripture. I'm not, I'm just speaking God's word. I may not be quoting the, but we've gone through this before. So, you know, God knows, God knows. And, and when you read your Bible and you can Google today, everybody have a smartphone, you'll find it. Amen. And maybe that will send you to go read the word, huh? If you haven't, because I know everybody, you know, most people read their Bible. So anyway, we can trust God that his word is what? True. Remember, God is called Elemet. He is truth. There's only righteousness and truth within him, right? His word gives life and health to those who understand the word of God. This is what Proverbs 4 and 22 tells us. When you understand to just read Psalm 91, it's not just, even though there is a blessing in it, because the Bible said, blessed are those who read the word of God and blessed are those who hear the word of God being read. So there is a blessing. But to benefit optimally, you have to understand who God is and that he is your heavenly Abba that is saying, shalom, peace be unto you. Shalom, peace be unto you. Shalom, peace be unto you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, thank you, God. You see, guys, listen. God does not want us to faint from panic, nor does he want our hearts to melt from heaviness. No, he wants us to know that we are blessed with instructions on how to live wisely. Word of God is here to instruct us how to live wisely. His love shapes our lives and removes the fears that we face. What's happening now is not new to God, as I said before. It's in the coronavirus is not causing God to wring his hands and say, come on, Jesus, Holy Spirit, wait, how, come, how could we have missed this? What's going on? Uh, how did we miss this? No, 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 no. See, they're actually wondering why aren't my children asking me what they should do to retain or to maintain or to have peace? He's saying, why aren't they drawing closer to me? Why aren't they saying, daddy, I need some peace? It's not wringing his hands. He's like, here are my outstretched arms. Come into them and be safe. See, God wants us to stand resolute in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of sickness. Because, guys, it goes from one thing to another. Huh? See, people were concerned about ice. Hmm? 
that is the immigration situation, people were concerned. And you think about it. Think about people who have underlying illnesses, people who are battling cancer, people whose hearts are weak. What's going on? And as I said, <laughs> may not be today, but I'm telling you, there was a meltdown in, in, in Russia last year. We see things happening. And sometimes we don't know. Is one thing meant as a diversion? Is, is one thing meant to cover up the other? We don't know. But you know who knows? God. So instead of being panicked, instead of being discombobulated, trust God. Trust God. Trust your daddy God. Because he's not just God. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He's everywhere. He's, omnip he's omnipresent. And he is your daddy God and my daddy God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, although many things are happening right now, God has promised in 1 Peter 5 and 18 that his son, the son of God, will keep us safe and he won't allow the evil one to harm us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, the shalom peace of Christ Jesus will destroy the disease before it gets to us. He's the high priest. That stands right in the midst with the censor and says, Shalom. Huh? It's got to stop. He spoke to the winds and it stopped. How much more? Now, you see, we have God's peace safeguarding us. We can trust God because he's faithful. And he is our daddy God who is protecting us at all costs. Guys, I don't know about you, but I pray that you're comforted. So let me just say, let us pray. Ask God, who is your daddy and my daddy, for guidance. Get adequate sleep. Build your immune system. We have to build our immune system. Stay hydrated. Let's wash our hands at least 20 seconds. Huh? Soap it properly and wash and wash frequently. Wipe off your doorknobs, your light switches, and your phones, guys. Wipe off your phones. Wear gloves if you must. Check on each other. Check on your brother or your sister, your church brother, your sister, your church sister, your neighbor, the elderly. Check, let's check on each other. Let's do a check. Call. You know, we are in an age of technology where we send off a text. But when you speak to someone, you will hear how they sound. Why don't you take time out today? Somebody you've, you've never thought about. Just, or even go through your phone list and say, wait, haven't called this person in a while. Let me call and see. Say a prayer also for each and every one. So, and be cautious. You know, I saw a video of a, a young white guy on a train. And he came, he had a mask on at first. And then he put his finger in his mouth and he like, I don't know what he was digging out of his. And then he meticulously wiped the pole up and down and around. And I said, my Lord, what is, who is he? What is he doing? But within this time of panic, I've seen people spraying other people on the trains, on the street. Guys, let's be wise. And, you know, and... Let's not let xenophobia take over because the virus not is not discriminating. It's not discriminatory. Uh, 
young, old, tall, short, white, black, yellow, pink, you know. Hey, but God, but God. So, I will close with this. My message this morning is real simple and real. It says, remember, Jesus says, peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. Come on. I can say to you, have peace. But Jesus says, I give you my peace. Come on. He, he's giving you his peace. Come on. It's like I'm taking off my shirt and saying, here, let me put this on you because you have no shirt on or because you're cold. It's like I have my dinner or, or my supper or I have this plant right here, right? And I said, here, I'm giving this plant to you. This is Jesus's personal peace that he's giving to you. Remember, like I, I've always, you know, when I think of President Obama as a president, how cool and calm and collected he was and how he would think, you know, he always made sure his faculties, the way he was thinking uh, before he spake, you know, the word of God said, think before we speak. He thought before he spake, right? And I thought, man, he was cool. But guess what? Jesus is the coolest man that walked the earth ever. He just maintained such a cool, like he knew who he was and he was, he always had a peace with him. And he said, I'm giving you that peace. Jesus is giving you that peace today if you have no peace. If you have trouble in your marriage, shalom. If you have trouble in your mind, shalom. If you have trouble in your health, shalom. If you have trouble in your finances, shalom. If you have trouble, concerns about the coronavirus or the influenza, shalom. Because he is God. All healing comes from God. All good things come from, comes from God. And so Jesus says, my peace is what I leave with you. My own peace, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I do not give it as the world does, Jesus says. And then he says, do not be worried. Do not be upset. Do not be afraid. Listen, I close with this. Shalom. Chaos is destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, the children of Israel did not know the way of peace. According to Romans chapter 3 and verse 17, that they do not know the way of peace. So today we pray that you will learn the way of peace, that Jesus Christ is our peace. He's Amen. our peacemaker, yes. he's our peacekeeper. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It, 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 the gospel is the gospel of peace in the midst of fear because Amen. in God there is no fear. There is absolutely no fear in Almighty God. Amen. God you are confident in God that God is able to protect you. Mm -hmm. God is able to keep you. God is able to guide you. God is able to watch over you. God is able to secure your life once you give yourself over solely to Him. Good and morning, Ali. And obey his command. Glory Amen. to God. So we pray that this message be a blessing, the blessing of peace, the gospel of peace. Amen. The God is the gospel of peace. Amen. Now, um, the message of fear that running rampant in the earth today, causing people to ignore faith. Hi, sweetheart. How are you, Ali? Sorry. Sorry, Bishop. Um, it caused people to ignore faith, but you cannot ignore faith and mm -mm. go to fear. No. Let faith, let faith override and overrule your fear. God has not given you the a spirit of fear, yeah. but of power, love, and a sound mind. A, a sound mind does not wander all over the place. It's just solid. Amen. On Christ, the solid rock, on the word of God, we stand. 
in the word of God we believe. Glory to God. Amen. Remember, the God of peace, the God of peace has trampled sickness and disease under his feet. He defeat because the Bible clearly says, for this reason the Son of Man has been what? Made manifest the what? Destroy the work of the devil. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Which is sickness and disease. All the works of the devil is trampled on the feet. Amen. We need to understand that, that we are now living by the grace of God for those who are believing wholeheartedly. And if your faith need to increase, if your belief need to be increased, please ask God to increase your faith. Say, if any man lack understanding, let him ask our wisdom. Let him ask. The peace of knowing, the peace of knowing, the peace of knowing the truth. I am protected by God. I will obey God's word. Glory to Amen. God. Let us not be like our ancestors who did not know the peace of God. Amen. The way of peace they did not know. You and I are to know the way of peace. Glory to God. So, for those who are on Facebook, we ask you to encourage others to, as um, Sister Florence asked, to check up on your neighbor. Do the little things that you can do to protect yourself. There are things that you and I need to do. You can't sit back and don't do anything. You must become engaged. You cannot become dis disengaged and disconnected. It don't work. You have to become connected and engaged in the things of God. Amen. Glory to God. Be be connected. Be connected. Get involved. Protect yourself at other. Protect others to the best of your ability. How you can give. And, and, and let us not send, send out all these fear messages. You know, you know, let's not do that. Let's not do that. If you could only just pray, or uh, pray, or uh, just, you know, send a gospel to you. The Lord is able to keep you. The Lord is able to protect you. The Lord is able to guide you. You understand? How be it the Lord. Send out messages like that. Let me comfort. It's a time when people need to be consoled by the word of truth and the word of life. Yes, and, amen. And Sister Flincher rightly say, you know, I've been teaching this for this whole week, um, Proverbs chapter, um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22. For they are life to them who find it and help to a man's whole body. Don't forget tonight, don't forget tonight at 8 o'clock. I'm going to show you things that you can do to help improve improve your health and uh, protect your immune system, strengthen your immune system. You gotta do something. You know, nothing is automatic. You have to activate the will of God, the word of God for your life and you're gonna get the results. So tonight at eight o'clock, Saints of God, we look forward for your day. Please tell a friend, tell a friend to tune in tonight. Hello our radio dot com. Glory to God download the apps. Go on the World Wide Web, or however, Facebook, um, like us on Facebook, finding the Lost Sheep Center, Inc., glory to God, and just follow us and say, uh, we're going to bring you things that can help you strengthen your immune system, uh, sister uh, Florentia say, hydrate yourself, hydrate yourself. The word um, thirst, the word thirst comes from the word dehydration, you know, he said, if every man thirst, when you're thirst, you're dehydrated. So you want to, you want to definitely drink a lot of water, not sweet juice, not soda and stuff like that. You understand? Because those things have long-term effect. Drink plenty of water, or orange juice, pineapple juice, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Make fresh squeeze juice. Protect yourself. That's what you have to do. Instead of worrying or panic, ask yourself, what am I going to do to protect myself? Amen. So. And that, that would be which love bless you so tonight at eight o'clock we are going to show you some things please tune in tonight at eight o'clock for some more valuable information trustworthy information that would help you so i'll turn it back to sister florencia okay so have a okay, blessed and a wonderful friend. day everyone just want you to know that tonight at 8 8 p.m tune in to finding the lost sheep center uh, Facebook page, or you can have uh, find um, WLOR Radio dot com. You can go online, or you can download the app and um, tune in at eight p.m. tonight. Uh, he will Bishop Anderson will be doing a message on uh, health. Okay, how to improve your health. So tune in to Finding the Lost Sheep Center 
sheepcenter.com. I'm putting it in the finding the lost sheep center. I'm putting that in. So, and um, and just be trust God. Stay close to God, and let's not be complacent, as Allison says. Let's uh make the changes that we need to change. Um, sorry. Hold on. Let me put this. Facebook. Exactly. Yeah, so I put that in. Get involved. Thank you. Yes, and we thank you for listening. We thank you for participating. Like and share. You know, so Facebook doesn't like to share certain messages. You know, I try to upload a video of mine and Facebook wouldn't allow it. I don't even know what was going on. But you know what? God is greater. So let's like and share. Let's pass on the information. Let's keep each other, you know, informed and be blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop, for your platform. Thank you, guys. And God bless. Remember, Shalom. Your chaos has been destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen.